Stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. Pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. And I'm Tilina Uderapna. We start off with a look at tonight's top stories. The upper age limit to apply for employment under the program launched to recruit unemployed graduates has been increased to 45 years. The Prime Minister in an interview with the Hindus says it is necessary to pull out from the 19th Amendment as it is problematic. A new alliance formed under the patronage of C.B. Vigneshwaran as an alternative to the TNA. The World Health Organization says the coronavirus death toll exceeds the SARS death toll of 2003. By shooting results in 26 persons being killed. For those and other stories in detail. The upper age limit to apply for employment under the program launched by the government to recruit unemployed graduates has been increased to 45 years. Previously, the upper age limit was given as 35 years. President Gotabe Rajapaksa decided to increase the upper age limit, taking into consideration requests put forward by graduates of upper age groups and appalled requests made by public institutions. Applicants, as of the 31st of December last year, should possess a first class degree recognized by the University Grants Commission or an equivalent develop diploma qualification. The specimen application form can be downloaded by the website of the Presidential Secretariat, which is www.presidentsoffice.gov.lk. Further information can be obtained from telephone number 0112-433-261. A photocopy of the degree certificate or diploma certificate and research sheet needs to be attested by a Justice of Peace or an attorney at law. Duly completed applications need to be sent before the 20th of this month to the Recruitment of Unemployed Graduates and Diploma Holders Program 2020, the Institutional Management and Coordination Division, Presidential Secretariat, Colombo 1. The Progressive Development Officers Association of Graduates says graduates extend their gratitude to the President for increasing the upper age limit to 45 years when recruiting unemployed graduates. President of the Association, V.K. Silvaratna, says this move is a victory not only to the present generation of unemployed graduates but also for their future. President of the Progressive Development Officers Association of Graduates, V.K. Siliratna, says President Gota Berajapaksa has delivered an acceptable solution today by lifting the upper age limit for the recruitment of unemployed graduates to 45 age limit in order to give the opportunity for all graduates. He further stated a lawful and justifiable solution has been given without having to restore, resort to protests but through negotiations. Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, who is on an official tour in India, met with former Indian Premier Manmohan Singh and former Indian Congress Party leader Rahul Gandhi in New Delhi yesterday. At the discussion between Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa and former Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, attention was focused on a number of points impacting both countries. Former leader of the Indian Congress Party Rahul Gandhi also joined in on the discussion. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa on a special flight from the New Delhi airport left for Varanasi this morning. A special welcome ceremony had been organized for the visiting premier who arrived at the Lal Bahadur Shastri airport in Varanasi. Thereafter, Prime Minister Rajapaksa and the Sri Lankan delegation engaged in religious rites at the Kashi Vishwanath Kovil, which is situated on the west bank of River Ganges. This Hindu temple is popular as a sacred site at which offerings are made to God Shiva. After Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa worshipped the sacred sites, he was warmly greeted by the Indian people gathered at the location as he was exiting the premises.
Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa says the government needs to pull out of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution as it is problematic. The Premier also says the present government is confident on meeting with debt payment requ requirement requirements rather this year, although this is the year in which the largest amount of repayments needs to be made. He points out if India provides a three-year relief period for the repayment of loans, other countries will also follow suit. The accepts of the interview are as follows. Also spoken of security and intelligence sharing with Pakistan. Won't the balance prove difficult, given India's concerns about terror emanating from Pakistan, which has also held up the SARC process? Yes, but we are friendly countries and we have friendly ties with all countries in the region. We are friendly with China too. But the Indian relationship is much stronger and very important for us. President Gota Beraj Paksa has prioritized development over devolution as the way forward. Is there a difference between your positions? Not at all. People need development. They have suffered for 30 years without it. So first, we want to develop these living areas. There has been a controversy over the decision to drop the national anthem in Tamil during Sri Lanka's National Day Ceremony. How can you reassure Tamils if this is the signal sent out? If you take a look around the world, the national anthem is sung primarily in one language. In India, you have so many languages, yet on your national day, you sing it in one language. Our structure is the same. When I go to Jaffna, to a Tamil school, they sing the anthem in Tamil. We have no objection if people want to sing it in their way. Some political figures are raising this as an issue, but the general public is not interested in this issue. Your biggest challenge this year will be servicing the domestic and foreign debt, which totals to about $60 billion. How do you plan to deal with this issue? This is something that we have discussed with the Indian government as well and have asked if we could get a moratorium on all loan repayments for three years until we can revive the economy. If the Indian government takes this step, then other governments might agree to do the same thing, including China. The previous government took so many loans, they beggared the economy, and it is a mess. This year alone, you have to pay about $5 billion to service the debt, the highest in Sri Lankan history. Will you be able to fulfill this? We have to do it, and we will manage this somehow. We don't want to default on our debt no matter what happens. Assuming that you win at the upcoming parliamentary elections, will you move forward on the 19th Amendment that shifts power from the presidency to the prime minister and parliament? First of all, we have to get rid of the 19th Amendment. Then we will think about how we will move forward. Professor G. L. Pires is already studying this. At the moment, neither the president nor the parliament has clear powers, so we do have to decide on the division of power. The majority of voters in Sri Lanka voted for President Gotabe Rajapaksa, and that means the people want him to have some control of the country's development and governance, and we must respect that. Given that the president is also your brother, could the tussle over the 19th Amendment cause problems between the two of you? No, not at all. With the way the present constitution is structured and the confusion with the 19th Amendment, only two brothers like President Gotabe and I can handle this. Otherwise, no president and prime minister will ever agree on this issue. And meanwhile, visiting finance minister of Afghanistan, Mohammad Hubayon Kwayami, met with President Gotabe Rajapaksa at the president's house this morning. The visiting Afghanistani finance minister exchanged views with the president on enhancing bilateral and regional relations. He also functions as the advisor to the Afghanistani president. The Afghanistan ambassador to Sri Lanka, Ashraf Haidari, also joined in on the discussion. An alliance with the grouping of four Tamil parties has been formed under the name of the Tamil People's National Alliance as an alternative to the Tamil National Alliance. The General Secretary of the Alliance is the former Chief Minister of the Northern Province, Sivi Vigneshwarin. The Memorandum of Understanding is, in this regard was signed in Jaffna today. The Tamil People's Alliance, led by former Chief Minister of Northern Province, Sivi Vigneshwarin, the 
EPRLF, led by Suresh Premachandran, the ETIA party, led by former Northern Provincial Minister Anand Shashidharan, who was elected to the Northern Provincial Council from the Tamil National Alliance, and the Tamil National Party, led by Attorney at Law N. Srikantha, who was a senior member who defected from the Tamil National Alliance, are the four political parties that signed the Memorandum of Understanding to form the alternate Tamil Alliance today. Significantly, TNA parliamentarian Shiva Shakti Anandan was also present at the signing. General Secretary of the newly formed Tamil People's National Alliance, C.V. Vigneshwaran, speaking at a media briefing held after the signing said, an aspiration of the Tamil people has been fulfilled at this moment. He says, the Tamil people are of the view that an alternate Tamil leadership is necessary. He further stated the newly formed alliance will function for the advancement of the Tamil people. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa says the disadvantage caused by delaying the candidacy at the presidential election should not be repeated at the parliamentary election. Addressing a rally held in Jaila, the opposition leader said now everyone should join together to proceed on the path of victory with dedication and determination. Opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said there will be no forward path by engaging in arguments. Therefore, what is needed is to go forward under a new alliance by resolving all points and issues. The opposition leader pointed out, as the presidential candidacy was finalized at the last moment, they faced a number of obstacles when carrying out the election campaign. He further stated such a situation should not be repeated at the parliamentary election. Well, an illegal sand mining racket which had been taking place in the Angulua Potuvatavana Oya at uh, Udubaddava was exposed on our singular news telecast at 8 p.m. yesterday. The Dummala Surya police, taking prompt action, confiscated many equipment used by the illegal sand miners today. This illegal sand mining activity had reportedly been carried out around the Putuvatavana Oya over a period of five years. The residents of the area alleged that supporters of a deputy minister of the previous regime are connected with this racket. They further state, although complaints were made on a number of occasions at the Dummula Surya and Madampe police stations, no action was taken. In a raid carried out upon the instructions of the Kuliapitiya SSP, the police seized many equipment, including two barges made out of barrels, which are used in the process of mining sand illegally. Our correspondent states, once the illegal activity was exposed on Rupa Vahindi News, the racketeers had filed the area on the very night, had fled the area on the very night itself. The Nava Mahaperahara of the Ganga Rama Vihare at Hunupitiya Kalambo paraded the streets last night. The pageant commenced under the patronage of President Gotabe Rajapaksa. Upon arriving at the Vihare, the President first engaged in religious observances. <laughs> The casket of relics was placed upon the caparisoned elephant by the president. The pageant was made colorful by the number of cultural items. This is Nava Mahaperahara is being held for the 42nd time and the Mahasanga people's representatives and a large gathering of devotees were present to witness the Perahara. <laughs> Mohammad Razik Mohammad Tazlin, who functioned as a former coordinating secretary of former Minister Kabir Hashim, testified before the Presidential Commissioner of Enquiry on the Easter Sunday attacks today. As he suffers a gunshot injury to his skull, the witness's statement was recorded as he lay on a special bed for patients. In his testimony, he stated that he was shot at since he assisted the CID in uncovering information pertaining to a number of incidents, including the vandalizing of Buddha statues in Mavanella. He added he was first made aware of the vandalizing incident by a relative of former minister Kabir Hashim in the early hours of the 27th of December 2018. 
He stated before the commission that he assisted in the investigations and as a result, an unidentified individual shot him in the head during the night time a day after the incident, causing him to obtain treatment at the Candy Hospital for 45 days. He also stated that he got to know about Zaharan for the first time from the CID officers. The World Health Organization has indicated that the number of coronavirus deaths has overtaken that of SARS epidemic in 2003. The death toll in mainland China from the coronavirus has surged to 811. According to the National Health Commission in China, in 2003, 774 people were killed by SARS in more than two dozen countries. More than 34,800 people have been infected with the new coronavirus worldwide, including the vast majority in China. The health officials in Hubei have reported 81 new fatalities on yesterday, bringing the death toll in the region to 780. So far, a total of 600 people who were contracted with the virus have recovered from the disease. There now have been 811 deaths in mainland China, with one each in Hong Kong and in the Philippines, while the total death toll has increased up to 813. Thus far, a U.S. citizen and a Japanese citizen were revealed as the first non-Chinese victims of the virus yesterday. The new virus, 2019 novel coronavirus was first reported in Hubei's capital of Wuhan and the sprawling city has been locked down for weeks. Accordingly, a total of 37,593 reported to have contracted the virus infection with 6,196 patients in critical conditions. Latest reports have indicated that the total number of people infected in Singapore has grown to 40. Canada confirmed seven cases of the coronavirus, while Thailand also confirmed seven new cases, bringing the total number of patients in the country to 32. Spanish authorities confirmed the country's second case of coronavirus today. South Korea reported three new cases of the virus, bringing the country's total to 27. Meanwhile, head of the World Health Organization, Ted Rose Avnam, criticized some countries for failing to share data on novel coronavirus cases while calling for more global solidarity to combat the virus. The WHO chief has said, he has written to all health ministers to improve data sharing on coronavirus cases immediately. Also, the chief of the team, led by the WHO to investigate the coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, set for an official visit to China in the upcoming days. Six more passengers, including another American, have fallen ill on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, bringing the total up to 69 passengers who have been diagnosed with coronavirus. The nationalities of the newly diagnosed passengers have not yet been revealed. A total of 3,700 passengers and workers are quarantined on the ship, which is harbored in the port city of Yokohama. Reports have indicated that two Sri Lankans are also aboard the ship. The Embassy of Sri Lanka in Japan has said that no report was received to confirm that they have been contracted with the virus. Chief Consultant Epidemiology Dr. Sudat Samaravira says as a result of the collective repre representative measures taken by the Ministry of Health jointly with the relevant institutions, it was possible to prevent the coronavirus from spreading in the Sri Lanka. 170 patients suspected to have contracted the coronavirus are under observation at 14 hospitals, including the infectious disease hospitals at Angoda. Only one confirmed case was reported so far, and that was a Chinese woman who is now in good condition. However, although she has recovered, she is still under medical observation. Dr. Sudat Samaravira says the 33 Sri Lankans who arrived from Wuhan and were transported to the quarantine center at the Atalava are also in condition. Chief Consultant Epidemiologist Dr. Sudat Samaravira said public health inspectors across the country are monitoring migrant workers and tourists arriving in Sri Lanka. Only one patient was reported so far. Dr. Samaravira said more patients were not reported as infected patients did not arrive in the country. He further stated should a corona infected patient arrive in the country, the necessary precautions are in place to identify the disease. President's Counsel Ali Sabri says a group of well-educated intellectuals who are productive to the country are needed for politics. Speaking at the Weap Maga conference of the Kegol district, he said the people have once again received an opportunity to elect such a group of representatives to the parliament.
President's Council Ali Sabri said, in the political process, it is not suitable to be bystanders as it will only result in regrets. Therefore, he believes the Vyap Maga is an intellectual product that fills this void. The President's Council observed until 1977 there were intellectuals who ran the politics of the country. However, after 1977, the situation changed and individuals began entering the politics mainly focusing on privileges, winning back lost social status and the greed for money. He noted the leaked tape recordings of phone calls that we hear of today are evidence of the results of such individuals entering politics due to intellectuals back then remaining silent without facing the challenges. Minister Bandula Gunavardhana says construction work for the largest international cricket stadium in South Asia will begin next month. The minister says the proposed stadium will be constructed at a land area of 28 acres in Diagama, Homagama. Minister Bandul Gunavardhana said, at present the largest stadium in Sri Lanka is the Kittaramia grounds, which has a 25,000 seating capacity. The minister announced that the government will commence construction work on the Mahinda Rajapaksa Stadium, which will be the largest in South Asia, with a seating capacity of 40,000. The stadium will be constructed at the Mahinda Rajapaksa College in Diagama, Homagama. The minister announced this plan, joining in on the commencement of construction work of a national-level cricket stadium, which is being built in the premises of the Mipe Technological University in Padukka. Construction work is being carried out jointly by the Sri Lanka Technological University and Sri Lanka Cricket. The stadium is set to be declared open on the 20th of December this year. An international photographic exhibition organized by the U.S. Photographers Association in Sri Lanka is underway at Lionel Vent in Colombo. The exhibition will conclude tomorrow and will display a collection of photographs from countries throughout the world. The photographers representing 80 countries are members of the U.S. Photographers Association.